kalla bal qana ala qulubihim ma kanu yasibun that this fraud it keeps increasing dot after dot dot until a person reaches a level where they become careless if you speak to them about the reward of ramadan they shrug their shoulders and they say so what ramadan has come and gone and i haven't felt anything But yet if you really ponder on the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ramadan and the benefits of Ramadan, you will come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may be grateful. This gratitude is for many things. The first thing that comes to mind is that we are grateful for the food and the drink that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. And yes, that is a part of it. But the greater part is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it specifically وَلِي تُكْمِلُ بِعِدَّةَ وَلِي تُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects this gratitude with the hidayah. with the guidance. Why? Because previously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us شَهُرْ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِرَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ that the month of Ramadan is the month that the Qur'an was revealed. And it is sad to see that we as a community, as a Muslim ummah, we hear the Qur'an time and time again But it does, it does not move our hearts. It does not move us in the same way that it moved the early generations. And that is due to that sickness in the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَمْ تَخْشَعَ قُرُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ That has the time not come for the believers to be moved by this revelation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people before us, the people who received the scriptures before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they would recite the Qur'an, or when they were first introduced to the Qur'an, it would cause them to cry. Not only that, they will fall down on their foreheads, prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of gratitude, out of thankfulness, because they recognize the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that time passed, these generations, Once they received the revelation, generations passed, time passed. And what happened to that message? People forgot that message. And, وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Because of them forgetting that message, most of them, many of them became فُسَاق, they became فَاسِقِينَ They became people who did the complete opposite what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from them. So it is not a shock when you see people not understanding the value of Ramadan because it shows in our own actions. Even the khutbah itself, how many people are listening to the khutbah, to the words that are being spoken? Most of the people, their minds are elsewhere. And again, it is a reflection on our own actions. When Ramadan comes, our focus is not on becoming better human beings, better Muslims. Our focus is completely different. And you've seen it yourself. Once the half of the month comes and goes, what is our focus? What is our discussion? It is about Eid, what are the presents, what are the clothes, and so on. Which is not a blameworthy thing, there's nothing wrong with preparing. 
but if you prepare for something, chances are that you will forget the present. You will forget that there is still time. And every year we mention it time and time again. There is a month left until Ramadan. The pious people before us, they would prepare for Ramadan for six months. And yet now we are trying to cram that preparation into less than four weeks or a little over four weeks. The people who lost their lives in New Zealand, the innocent Muslims, if you were to ask any one of them, each and every one would expect to see Ramadan. And we are in the same boat. We speak about the future as if, as if we are entitled to the future. But the truth of the matter is, no one knows how long life will last. Perhaps after this khutbah, our life will come to an end. So part of the preparation of Ramadan or for Ramadan is knowing that you might not even reach Ramadan. And the point as a Muslim is never to sit back and say, I will wait until Ramadan to become a better Muslim. I will wait until Ramadan to pick up the book of Allah. I will wait until Ramadan to pray my five prayers. No. You do what you can now, and when Ramadan comes, you increase. But if you leave it until the very last moment, even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you time until Ramadan, you will fumble, you will stumble. It will become difficult for you. Your focus will be on the hunger itself. And you won't, you will find that most of Ramadan will have passed you by and you will have nothing to show for it. Inshallah, the plan is in the coming few weeks for us to prepare ourselves for Ramadan in many different ways, both as a community and as individuals. Often when people speak about the Qur'an not moving our hearts, it's because of our lack of understanding. For most of us, Arabic is not our native tongue. And even for those native speakers, there needs to be education. <coughs> but where do you get that education? You have to find a venue, a place. And what place is better than the house of Allah, the masjid itself? But if you want to be educated, you need to strive and you need to find those places where you can learn about the Book of Allah. You will see the classes here at the masjid, regular classes. <coughs> Not many people at, uh, attend those classes and I will be honest with you. So how can we claim that we want the most of a blessed month when we don't even understand what that means? And like the Prophet ﷺ told us time and time again, the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deed that is the most consistent. The more consistent you are with the deed, the more beloved it becomes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is better that you start off now reading a chapter of the Qur'an, listening to a lecture, coming to the masjid, doing good, then giving it 110% in Ramadan, and then once Ramadan is over, you act as if you never knew what Ramadan was. So brothers and sisters, let us make the most of these few weeks, the few days that we have left, so that once the blessed month is upon us, we will make the most of it. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.
الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Ibn Abbas عنهما, said in a narration asking the people, asking Muslims what prevents people from reading just three verses of the Quran once they finish their other obligations when they come back from work when they come back from the things that they need to do to sit back at home, to relax, open the book of Allah and read just three verses. And this is Ibn Abbas who is mentioning this, a great companion. He is not saying, he is not instructing you to read a juz of the Quran or two juz or three ajza or whatever it might be. He is telling you three verses, just three verses. Because he understands the impact that the Qur'an is supposed to have. But again, it comes back to what we mentioned earlier. In order for that impact to be felt, you need to understand. Even a parrot can recite the Qur'an. And we've seen the YouTube videos. But the Qur'an is not just to be recited. It is supposed to be implemented. This is why when Aisha anha was asked about the Prophet وسلم, what was the character of the Prophet وسلم, what did she respond with? That his character was the Qur'an. It was as if the Qur'an had been personified, it had been put in a person. Everything that the Prophet وسلم, spoke, everything that he did, he did accordance to the Qur'an. And this is the way that we as Muslims should be. The Qur'an is not just for Ramadan. The Qur'an is not just for the masjid. It is not just for an hour of our day where we sit and recite it. We need to actively learn about what the Qur'an is teaching. And then we use those teachings in our daily lives when we interact with people. If we want to do something that we shouldn't be doing, then we think back. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this? Am I supposed to do this? Because at the end of the day, when everything is said and done, there is accountability. Accountability in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask each and every person, what did you do with my blessings? With the time that I gave you, with the knowledge that I gave you, with the provision that I provided you with. So brothers and sisters, this is the time to sow those, seed, those seeds and water them so that when Ramadan comes, we will make the most of them the blessed month. ثم علموا أيها المؤمنون أن الله أمركم أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين يا رب العالمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء الذنوب وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر